Salute, salute, what's up? Salute, salute, what's up everybody? This is Ishan Burgundy and um, I wanted to take this time to make a video to explain some things and just kind of make some things clear for for people who are interested. Um, I want to do this because I've been posting things on social media for a while now and some people don't understand, you know, my aim, my direction or even what I'm on. Other people do and they like, yo, right on, keep on, keep up the good work. You know what I'm saying? They saluting me like, yes, yeah, what's up, Ishan, all of that. Um, but like I said, there's some people who don't, who don't get it and uh, don't understand and you know, being as though we're in the time, I feel like could be, you know, the great falling away. Um, I think it's the great falling away and the great awakening at the same time, personally. And um, because of that, I want to make myself clear and I don't want to leave no room for misunderstanding or, you know, things being misconstrued. Because I know there are people, a lot of people who are inspired and encouraged um, by the most high and his word from listening to my music. So I want to make sure that we clear and we good on all sides. Uh, so like I said, I want to take this time out to make a video just to explain to y'all where I'm at um, in my faith and what I believe and all of that. I know there are people like posting things online as well, you know, saying all kind of things. So let me say this. I am a Hebrew. I am an Israelite. Um, but that right there, I know the way a lot of y'all are taught. I was taught this same way that if somebody identifies as a Hebrew or a Hebrew Israelite, um, then it, that automatically means, you know, if, if you're black and you do that, it automatically means that you're full of heresy, um, that you're a part of the quote unquote black Hebrew Israelite movement and that you're just like these guys that are part of these camps and that are out on the street corners cursing people out, you know, spewing, you know, seemingly spewing hate and um, uh, quote unquote black supremacy. And so being as though that's the and I'm not saying those guys on the corner are all doing that because I don't think they are, but I know that's the understanding, that's the narrative that has been shaped in mainstream society about these about these camps. And like I said, I, I don't identify with any of these camps, but I know that as soon as you say, as soon as a black person says they're Hebrew Israelite, that's what they associate you with. And automatically, you know, it's just a bunch of nonsense around it. So I want to say that, uh, I am a Hebrew Israelite, and I want to show you in this video why I've come to that understanding. And um, my doctrine is still fairly uh, the same. My theology is still the same as if I was, you know, the same way I was a year ago. <laughs> um, that doesn't change, and it hasn't changed for me. But my perspective on scripture has changed in the sense that I now know who are the people of the book, who this book, this Bible that we've been all reading, me, I've been reading for 20 years. Now I know and understand who it's about. And for me, that just brought a tremendous amount of clarity and um, just a relief and find, finally finding an understanding. So up until last year, I had been asking the most high periodically, you know, uh, a few times I asked him, you know, why are we treated like this, Father? Like, why are so-called black people here in America and really all around the world, why are we treated less than? Why are we always on the bottom? Why here in America, we're the ones who just get murdered out in the streets um, why are we, you know, getting murdered by police officers and, 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 um, racists and, you know, stuff like that. Why, you know, in our neighborhoods, why do we get shoved in these, these ghettos 
And why in these ghettos do they, you know, just give us the foulest food? Why, you know, a lot of people in the ghettos on public assistance, depending on the government, and why are these, you know, guns and drugs dumped in these communities and the people are just kind of left to fend for themselves and figure it out? Why do the police officers descend on these communities? Like, why do they get get together in the morning, get suited up, put their vests on, grab their they guns and get in their cars and they drive to our communities to police our communities. Um, like, why is this the case for us? Why are we dying at a rapid rate? Why is the abortion rate the way it is for black people? Why did Margaret Singer, you know, and her cohorts, you know, develop Planned Parenthood to kill our babies? Like, why is this our reality? And, um, Last year, I asked the Most High that, and um, around that time, I, I've been talking to my wife as well, and I remember saying something to her, because what I've been taught in evangelical Christianity um, is that, you know, we're all Gentiles, you know what I'm saying, and that um, because we're all Gentiles, we're all, uh, you know, adop- adopted in. We're engrafted in um, into the body of Christ through Christ, and 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 this is how we receive uh, our salvation. Um, and when when I told my wife about us being adopted in, and she said this before, but it didn't really hit me until she said it this particular time. She said, "I'm not adopted," and I'm like, "You know what you mean? You're not adopted? Like we all we adopted in? You know what I'm saying?" Um, you know, Yah has his original, his original uh, uh, um, people, and we are adopted in. We're grafted in, and she was like, "Nah," you know, and she didn't really have the answer as to why she wasn't adopted, but she just knew it was this inherent thing in her, this innate thing in her it was like, "Nah, I'm not adopted. Like I belong to the Most High. Like I'm His. Like I know it." You know what I'm saying? And when she said that, it challenged me because I was like, man, like, I I feel her, but I can't really, I don't really have an explanation for that. I don't know how to, you know, come to no resolve with that in my mind. So I, I just began this journey. So like I said, around that time, I'm asking the most high um, these questions about us, about being in, adopted and all of that. And I, you know, I believe he led me to read the Bible so go through the whole, like like from Genesis to Revelations. And so that's what I did. I went through all the scriptures. And when I I got to Deuteronomy, just 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 reading uh uh Genesis through Exodus. And 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 like and just for me I've never done that. You know what I mean? Let me let me make that clear. I was taught in Christianity to spend most of your time in the New Testament, like forget the Old Testament. I well, not forget it, but, you know, the Old Testament is passe. It's old. Um, focus primarily on the Gospels. And for my whole Christian life, you know, what I'm saying that's where my that's where my focus was. Even, you know, when I was young, real young in the faith. You know, I used to carry around my little Bible that had the the New Testament and then had Psalms and Proverbs in it. So that's what I focused on. I never I never worried about the other parts of the Old Testament unless I was going back for a reference point here and there. You know what I'm saying? Or I may hear heard stories, you know what I'm saying? But I never took the time to read it, you know, go all through it, like straight through. And so I did, and and as I began to do that, it's just like it, it things just start becoming clear. And when I read Deuteronomy 28, you know, when it talks about the curses uh, that the Most High put on uh, uh, um, Israel because of their disobedience, you know what I'm saying? He pretty much says, you know, if you obey, your life, your lives will be like this. This will be your existence here on this earth. If not, this is what, you know, if you don't obey, this is what your life is going to be like. And he proceeds to just run down this long list of curses. Read it when you get a chance. 
Um, I don't want to I don't want to make this video too, too long. So I'm not going to read it here, but it's lengthy. And as I'm reading it, I just feel like the most high is like this is your people. Like it was just clear to me like, yo, this is your people. And this is me in the most. This ain't something somebody told me. This is not something that I heard somewhere else. And I'm jumping in the scriptures to verify it. This is me reading the scriptures and it becoming a reality for me. And it, I just felt so much clarity and seeing everything that they that, that was being named in Deuteronomy and looking at so-called black people here in America and being like, yo, wow, this is really our reality. This has been our reality. You know, and that just sent me on, you know, more of an even deeper journey to search out more truth and things that I wasn't being taught in evangel evangelical Christianity. I wanted to know more. And so it just led me to research a lot of things. So for over a year now, I've been researching like crazy. I've been seeing a lot, reading a lot, watching different videos, being exposed to a lot. And what I've come to, the realization that I've come to is that a good amount of so-called black people here in America are descendants of the tribe of Judah. That they are, um, we are Hebrews. And um, it's a beautiful um, revelation to come to because like I said, it answers a lot of questions, makes a lot of things clear. So I know that was long. Um, let me get into this real quick. Let's um, this is not everything, of course, you know, I miss mean, a lot, a lot of stuff. But I just, you know, threw this um, together real quick just to kind of go through a few things for y'all. Some things that uh, stood out to me um, recently. So this right here, this is Acts, the book of Acts 11. And this is. Or chapter 11, this is verse 19. And I thought this was very, very interesting. It says, now those who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed, traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, spreading the word only among Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. News of this reached the church in Jerusalem and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and he saw uh, what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged he, he was glad and encouraged them to all remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So far, um, so for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people, the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. That right there um, is very, very interest, interesting. They, the disciples, the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. So um, when when I uh, I thought about this word, this word um, that I found in Strong's Concordance, because at Antioch, there was a guy um, called, uh, let me see, what, it was uh, Simeon, right? And his surname was, what I thought at the time, I thought it was Niger. I've always been told that that's how you pronounce that, Niger, this word right here um, that we find in Strong's Greek lexicon. It says Niger, but it says 
it's not pronounced niger. Its pronunciation is niger. Niger. It says it's of Latin origin. It means black. Niger. A Christian. A Christian. I was like, wow. So Niger is of Latin origin and it means black and it's a Christian. And so I got this book um, from the thrift store a while ago. I posted on social media about it from Zondervan and it's called the Bible Pictorial Dictionary. And um, when I was reading that, I was reading through... um, the book and it has different um, words that's used in the Bible and they have a description of it and it tells you the history of that word. And so I looked up the word Niger there and it says Niger is a surname of Simeon. So a surname is like the name of a group of people. And it says that he uh is one of the five prophets and teachers of the church at Antioch who were led of the Lord to send Paul and Barnabas to the first on the first Christian on the I'm sorry, the first missionary journey. And then it says that it's probably a Hebrew Christian from North Africa. And I was like, what? So the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch and a Christian is a Neger and a Neger is probably a Hebrew Christian from North Africa. That makes me think and I don't know. I just saw this literally the other day and was blown away by it. But I'm like, man, did they call them Christians at Antioch? Or did they call them niggas at Antioch? Because that's what this thing says. It says this nigger. I mean, I know I'm not tripping. And they took this out of one of the more recent, the, 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 the later editions of this book. See, if you want the truth, you really got to go back to the beginning, the earlier versions of these works, and you'll find the truth before they covered it up and switched things. So I thought this was very uh, telling of, you know, the truth and what's, you know, attempted to be hidden because they call us, Niggas, they call us, you know, niggas. This is what they, this is what we've been called here in America. So-called black people, we've been called this. Not knowing that it means a Hebrew Christian from North America. And so um, I got a few other things here I wanted to show y'all. Um, this right here. Uh, well, let me go here first to this Negro land map from the 1700s. Um, this is another map. Uh, well, not another map, but this is another thing that if you look at the more recent maps, you're not going to see this on it at all. But if you go back, like I said a minute ago, you'll find the truth. And so the Negro land map from the from from the 1700s shows Negro land. It shows New Guinea right here, and it shows you the different coasts. And so this right here is, I believe this is the Grand Coast. I'm not sure. It says the Tooth Coast, the Gold Coast. And right here, it says it's the slave coast. So this is where the slaves were taken. 
right here on the edge of Africa. And so when you scroll in, you see this KM and that symbolizes uh, kingdom. So it says the kingdom of Judah. The kingdom of Judah was right here on right here where the slave coast is. So this is where they took the slaves. The kingdom of Judah is right here. Um, when we read this right here, this is from Black Jews, The Religious Challenge or Politics Versus Religion. This is written by Ulysses Santa Maria and it's published by Cambridge University. And I got this uh, from a brother named Dante Fortson. I saw him mention this. And so it says here that uh, the study of customs and rights and the analysis of the semantics of these African tribes have led many of their observers to propose some hypotheses and even to draw some conclusions. Dr. Alan H. Godbey reached the following conclusion. These factors have a specific significance if we consider the presence of Judaism among American Negroes. I was I mentioned this on on social media before how we knew the most high. We knew the Messiah before um, this current um, form of Christianity was was forced on us on, on uh, upon us coming to America. Um, it says hundreds of thousands of slaves were transported to America from West Africa during the slave trade, which started some 400 years ago. What traces of Judaism still remain among the Negroes of West Africa in that period? To the extent that they were persecuted, they were more likely than any than other Negroes to be seized during wars and sold as slaves. So it says that the Negroes who and on West Africa, right where I showed you on the Negro land map, this is West Africa. It says uh, that, uh, that that they practice Judaism. And it said what 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 traces of Judaism, Judaism still remain among the Negroes in West Africa during that period. It was like to the extent that they were persecuted for it and because of it. And they were more likely than other Negroes to be seized during the wars and sold as slaves. So these were sought after the, the slaves that were taken and brought here to America. They were the, the Hebrew ones, the ones that practiced Judaism were sought after. They were more likely than any other Negroes to be seized during the wars and sold as slaves. It is virtually certain that many part Jewish Negroes were among those sent the, among the among those sent as slaves to America. So we see that. Um, okay, right here. This is uh, General History of Africa, a bridge edition. Um, volume five, Africa from the 16th to the 18th century. And this is the United Nations um, Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. And it says here. It says Africans also settled along parts of the Malabar coast during the 17th and 18th centuries. These were black Jews, descendants of African slaves. It says, if we skip down, it says the Italian scholar and traveler Pietro Dalla Vella, Velli, I'm not sure, I'm probably butchering that name, um, reported that blacks from East and West Africa, Ghanaians, Guineans, um, and Mozambicans were sent by sea to the Portuguese territories. The Portuguese made their black slaves domestic barriers and guards for their escorts. The women were often taken as mistresses. Another part of India, 
uh, the Deccan witnessed a dramatic rise to power. Oh, da, 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 da. Okay. But the important part of that is when it says that these were black Jews, the descendants of African slaves. That's what I wanted to highlight. And so this is this is what it is, man. Like people are people are trying to debunk this and say it's not what it is, but I mean we can clearly see that this is what it is. So the slaves that were brought here, a good amount of them, I can't say all of them, but a good amount of them, since they were sought after more than any other, were Hebrews who practiced Judaism, who were descendants of the tribe of Judah. This is it's just a fact. This is our history. This doesn't um, change um, the fact that Christ is the way of salvation. This doesn't change um, the fact that we have to, you know, believe and trust in him and, and have all faith in him to be to be saved. No, nah, this just changed the narrative of the quote unquote or the so-called black people here in America. And this shows you why we were given the name black, why we're given the name Negro, why we're given the name colored. Why we don't have any history of our own, why we've been denied a history, why, you know, we've been brainwashed to believe it's OK that we don't have a history and that we've been given slave. When we got here, they gave us slave names. They took our Hebrew names away. They gave us slave names. They gave us the name of our masters. You know, we were forbidden to read on our own or we'd be killed, have our tongues cut out, have our eyes gouged out. If we were caught reading and when they gave us the book, when they gave us the Bible, they gave us they gave us they gave us a Bible with 90 percent of the Old Testament missing, 60 percent of the New Testament missing. And told us, you know, that, you know, that that stuff didn't matter. They gave us slave Bibles because they didn't want us to know the truth. They didn't want us to know who we are. But the most high. You know. Is waking us up and showing us the truth, man. Let me let me read this to you real quick too. So, um, and Isaiah talks about a remnant, how a remnant of Israel will uh, return. It says in Isaiah, I think this is Isaiah ten twenty. Yeah, Isaiah ten twenty. It says in that. In that day, the remnant of Israel, the survivors of Jacob, will no longer rely on him who struck them down, but will truly rely on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. A remnant will return. A remnant of Jacob will return to the mighty God. Though your people be like the sand by the sea, Israel, only a remnant will return. Destruction has been decreed overwhelming and righteous the lord the almighty the lord almighty will carry out destruction decreed upon the whole land therefore this is what the lord the almighty says my people who live in zion do not be afraid of the assyrians who beat you with a rod and lift you up and lift up a club against you as egypt did very soon my anger against you will end and my wrath will be directed to their destruction. That's a whole nother story right there. That's like that's but um, that's Isaiah 10, 20 through 25. And uh, a book called Baruch, which is in the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha is uh, a nine a non-canonical book um, that they removed from the original King James version, the 1611 King James Bible, like the King James Bible that we have now. Um, this was a King James Bible, the original, and it had the Apocrypha in it, which was several books that, like I said, they took out because they deemed weren't weren't uh, uh, ins inspired works. Um, but. All scripture is is God breathed. And so if we go to Baruch. We read um, Baruch 232 
Um, well, uh, I, I guess I, I think this is uh, two twenty nine through through thirty five. Yeah, it says, "If ye will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations." See how we read in in Isaiah that uh, it would be a remnant of Israel. So it says that the great multitude shall be um, uh, turned into a small number among the nations where I will scatter them. So he scattered us. Um, but it's going to, you know, the great multitude is going to turn into a small number. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. In the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. We are in the land of our captivity. We're not slaves like we used to be, but we are still in the land of our captivity. We didn't pack up and move after slavery, you know, formal slavery, chattel slavery was done here in the U.S. We stayed. So we're here in the land of our captivities and shall know that I am the Lord, their God, for I will give them a heart and ears to hear, and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and look upon my name and return from their stiff neck and wicked deeds. So you can go ahead and check that out. Y'all can read that if you like. Um, But yeah, they shall remember me in the land of their captivity. And I believe, I wholly believe that that's what's happening right now. That, you know, quote unquote, so-called black people, niggas all over the world are remembering the Most High in the land of their captivity and finding out the truth that we are his, um, we are his chosen people. We are his set apart people. Um, and like I said, that's a beautiful thing to wake up to this reality and to know that, that, you know, we're not what everybody said we were. And that was nobody's. And that was, you know, people told me like, no, nah, we were savages over, over in Africa. You know, they came and they threw nets on savages and they just grabbed us and they came here and they, and they civilized us. That is not the case. That was not the case, and that is not the case. We was not savages. We were educated. We practiced Judaism. We followed the Most High. You know, we, it, was, it, it was a curse. You know, we had a price to pay. But that 400 years is up. It was up last year. Trump made the announcement. It was up. And it's up. And it's a new day. And people are waking up and it's a time to rejoice, you know, no hate for nobody else. Ain't got no hate for nobody. I don't hate white people. I'm not saying white people are this and that. I ain't saying none of that. Everybody can be saved if they trust and believe in the Messiah. You understand? So uh, let me show you all our two videos. I want to show you all. This video right here is of um, a Jewish guy talking to um, some Africans and letting them know that they know that um, the 10 tribes were scattered in Africa. Well, were, um, that they went to Africa, the 10 tribes, and that the last two tribes, Judah and Benjamin, were scattered around the world. So check this out. Searching Rashi 850 years ago, 
growth within tribes went to one place, Africa. The other two tribes, Benjamin and Judah, spread all over the world, and Hashem will gather them. And the ten tribes of Israel went to Africa, and by the end of time, they will come. By the end of time, they will come. We will be returned back to the land. This right here, this video right here, where the brother talks about how, you know, the white Jews, the Jews we see over in 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 the land, in that land um, right now are converts and that, you know, the true Jews are, the biblical Jews are, are black. Um, check this out. They're the real chosen people. That they're the children of Israel. They're the Judeans. You know. So what are they just trying to create a, an identity for themselves that they were slaves, or is there really something here? And the answer is most likely there is something there. And most likely, maybe that they were the original Israelites, and maybe that the Jewish people today, who are white Caucasian people, um, came in a little bit later on. We know that some of the greatest stages of the transmission of the Torah were converts from Rome. So, yeah, they know what it is. You know, the world knows what it is. Uh, a lot of us just don't know. You know, like we think that those people over there are certified and, you know, they're converts. You know, we are, you know, and a, and a convert means that you behave, you know, the way that a Jew does. So they, they, they're they practicing Judaism. But for us, we're part of the bloodline. You understand? And so, you know, and I know this is it's not popular, but the truth ain't never been popular. You know, and people, you know, we say this and people think, oh, no, it don't matter, though, but it don't matter. We're all, we're all one in Christ. No, it does matter. It really does matter for us to know who you are, because the Most High never, never got rid of his people. You know, he you see him and you see him in the word promising, saying like, yo, one day I'm going to return them to the land like I'm coming for my people. You understand? And the people that, that dealt with them harshly and did all of this stuff to them, like we have been done to all throughout the world, like they're going to pay for that. So ain't nobody get away with treating us the way they've done. You know, that's going to have to be paid for the Messiah. I mean, the, the, the Messiah, yeah, and the Most High. You know what I'm saying? It's coming for. You're coming for, you know, the children of Israel. And so we're grateful for that. We're thankful for that. I rejoice in that. I bless the name of the Most High, Yahuwah. Bless the name of His Son, Yah, Yahshua, Yahusha, Hamashiach, and the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Grateful to be known by them all and to know them all and to know the truth. Salute.